Do you have a table of contents post on your Substack publication? If you don't, I highly recommend that you create one right now. This is my table of contents post on my Substack publication, How to Write for a Living. As you can see, it is enormous. It is front and center. It is eye-catching, and it is the first thing people are going to see whenever they visit my publication. Um, I'm going to talk you through uh, how I've created it and why I've created it now in this short video. So this is the table of contents post. Um, as you can see, it is very, very comprehensive. This is every article that is in my publication. I'm just going to scroll out to the bottom so you can see exactly what's included here super fast. But just to give you an idea of how much is actually in this this post on my, my publication. So um, the reason why I set this up, first of all, is because I wanted to give people um, a bit of extra help in navigating how to write for a living. I wanted them to be able to arrive on the publication and not feel overwhelmed and not be confused by where to go first. Obviously, they can spend a bit of time there if they want, um, reading through articles, clicking through, trying to find their way, trying to navigate through the, the publication. But I wanted to give them um, easier access. I wanted to direct them where I wanted them to go and help them discover exactly what they need to discover from the publication right from the start. Um, basically, I wanted them to get maximum value from their time here. So... I created this post. It sits right front and center in my publication and it directs people where I want them to go. So that's the purpose of it. That's why I've created it. I think it's a really good idea to do it because it just helps people navigate it. It makes makes them come away with a sense of, I understood what I received there. I want to come back to that again. It was easy to navigate. Um, and I think it's really, really high value in general. So if you haven't got one, definitely consider making one and I'm going to talk you through my table of contents post now and explain why I've created it in the way that I have. So first of all, headline, super simple, table of contents start here and subheading a complete directory of every post in how to write for a living. Really, really simple. It doesn't need to be clever at this point. This is just a really, really basic headline that says exactly what it is. Um, it's eye-catching enough and it doesn't need to be clever, as I said. Um, all it needs to do is say, what it is um, and, and lay that out. So I wouldn't I wouldn't overcomplicate this name. I wouldn't try to be clever about it. I would just keep it really, really simple and go from there. And again, a simple feature image just of a guy reading a book, which I found on Canva, um, just to kind of solidify that impression that people are opening the book and they're going to read through the table of contents and to create that connection in their brain about what's going to happen next and what to expect. So I have a little bit of a preamble, three short uh many paragraphs or sentences right at the top explaining exactly what this is all about. And then I go into one of two CTAs on the publication. This is basically a call to action, encouraging people to upgrade to my paid tier. And this is why this post is probably my most valuable post in my entire publication. This is driven, I would I would imagine this is driven thousands of dollars worth, if I didn't know it's driven thousands of dollars worth of, of income and revenue from this publication. This is purely because of the CTAs that are within it um, right at the top. And the reason why this is so effective is because um, I offer a 10% discount uh, coupon to everyone who, who arrives at this stage and considers clicking through and upgrading to an annual membership. Um, you can do it for a paid monthly membership as well, but I choose to do it just for annual because I want to get that extra bump every time somebody somebody upgrades and, and I think it's more useful that way. So um, this is just something that you can do um, and encourages people to upgrade right away. And by the time they go to the bottom of your table of contents, hopefully they'll be even more encouraged to want to upgrade because they'll see the, all, um, all the maximum value they're going to receive from it. So uh, I just have a simple sentence, CTA with a little emoji, a bullet point breakdown of what people get whenever they upgrade um, and the coupon at the bottom. Really, really simple. That's all it needs. Um, but it's a CTA, it's powerful. And as I said, it does generate a good deal of revenue from this this one post. Next, I've got a key for the, the table of contents. So literally just post written by me, guest posts and interview uh, posts as well. Um, and that's all it really needs. And you'll be able to see whenever I scroll down here, how many were written by me, how many were guest posts and how many were interviews. Um, it just makes it easier to navigate, I think, for people as well. If they're looking for a guest post in particular or one written by me, if they want to read my stuff, they'll be able to pick that out more easily. Um, I've uh, put in some specific links here, these first three, to recommended digital products. These are products that I've created um, or products that I'm affiliated with that other people other people have created. So um, they're definitely um, 
loads and loads of value for writers and anyone who wants to generate money from their writing. So you should definitely check those out. Um, I've got links then to my Saturday morning coffee roundup posts and to my podcast episodes. And these are um, tabs on my publication up at the top. So I don't need to include them all here. They're already on um, my publication's homepage. I just link to that tab and people can find it there. So it's it makes it easier to navigate the rest of this post. And then, as you can see, I've got my my headlines here. So I've broken these into categories. Um, and this is online writing. And again, you can see which posts are written by me with the blue arrows and which ones are written by other people with the stars. So um, there's a nice mix there um, of, of my posts and other people's posts. And then I've got books and marketing mindset. There's the interviews with the microphones, some deep dives, posts that are specifically about Substack. Um, and that's all that's all that's there. And then over here on the left, as you can see, if you hover over this and click, um, Substack does a super cool thing where if you've used um, headline formatting with your with your headlines like this, this is a headline format, I think it's an H2, um, it will then appear over here on this side. So this is like a table of contents within the table of contents post. And it makes it really, really easy to navigate. It'll just take you up and down wherever you want to go. So um, highly recommend using that uh, that H2 or H1 headline or even H3 because I think it will all appear on the side and it makes it just so nice and um, so clean, so functional. And why would you not do it if you if you can? Next, I've got this uh, what next section. So I encourage people to click through to uh, my courses to check out my coaching, which basically takes them through to my subscribe page where they can become a VIP uh, member and then they'll get coaching with me. Um, and I also encourage people to check out my promotion options if someone wants to advertise on my publication as a brand or a creator or another editor or another writer, then they can do that as well. And we'll take them through to the landing page with those options. So um, as you can see at the minute, I reach 18,000 plus readers. So it's a really great option if you want to advertise um, a product or something you've written or your service. And um, this is a really good place to do it. And then next I have a, a little bit of social proof. So I got some testimonials from other um, writers on Substack from other publication owners, um, which is literally just a screenshot that I've taken and just placed in there. It's really, really easy and simple. Anybody can do it. Um, I think I maybe put it together on Canva. So they'll, they all appear like that. But again, it's really easy to do. This is a bit of a, pl a plug for Canva as well. I love Canva. Um, but yeah, really nice bit of social proof right at the bottom for people to click through. It helps me just to see what you're all about and that you're not um, just blowing smoke. You do have um, other people's words to back it up. So it's definitely good to include this kind of thing. And finally, right at the bottom, um, I've got a second CTA that mirrors the first one. It's just a simple line with that same button taking people through to my subscribe page. Um, again, give them that option. They, if they got this far, they've seen the, the sheer weight of value they're going to receive from your publication. So um, this is a really good opportunity to nudge them again to become a paid subscriber. So that's the table of contents post. Um, it's so incredibly easy to put together. And um, once you've got it going, the one thing I would say is that um, when you're when you're putting it together for the first time, it is time consuming because you have to go through and copy and paste all of your headlines and put links in for them all and organize them like this. And it does take a little bit of time to do. You'd be comfortably setting aside um, at least a couple of hours to do this. So um, it's a it's a bit it's a good bit of initial hard work, but once it's done, it's very passive. It's just a matter of updating it once a week or once a month, whatever you want to do, whatever your cadence is. Um, and then it's there and people can just find it at any point and it's super helpful. If I go back to my publication homepage, just to show you real quick how this is front and center like this. Um, if you hover over at the bottom of any post, down at the bottom here, there's three little dots on the bottom right. And you click those and brings up this drop down and you can pin your post. This is obviously giving me the option to unpin it, but if you if it wasn't pinned, you could you could pin this post to your homepage and then you can rearrange it so that this one appears here just by pinning and unpinning until you get the right combination. Um, and obviously you can rearrange your your entire publication homepage to sit the way you want it to be. This is just the layout I've chosen because I feel it has a nice magazine style feel, um, but you can go with whatever, whatever style you want. Um, but that's all you need to do. That's how you get that post there. And it's really effective. It's right there in the middle. It's very eye-catching. It serves as a real focal point. It's the sun around which the rest of your publication orbits. And it just helps new readers and existing readers, whenever they come back to it, navigate and find out where they're going to go next. And one more thing I want to show you. If I click through to my most recent roundup post here and scroll down and you can see all the amazing value people get from these roundup posts. <laughs> right at the bottom of this post and of every post on my publication, I have... Um, one of these little embedded links to 
the table of contents post. So um, what I want people to do is when they get to the end of a post, I want them to click through to this link and cycle back to the table of contents again and keep them on the publication as long as they possibly can. I want them to spend time within my orbit, within the, the content sphere that I have. Um, and the best way to do this is to just cycle them back every time um, to uh, to the table of contents. So once you've made one post and you and you have like a, a format or a setup, it's essentially like a template and this will always be at the bottom. So you don't have to add it in every time. It's always there. You just have to remember to update this post periodically um, and, and keep it nice and fresh. And, and you can share it on the notes as well. Each time you update it as another little CTA bump for people to go through and, and read through it and and see the value that, that they can get. Again, the best thing about a table of contents post is you're showing people rather than telling them what the value is. All of these posts and uh, all these links are paywalled. So only the most recent post that I put out will be free. It's free for seven days, which is plenty of time for people to read it. And then it drops behind the paywall and it enters into this uh, this list of similarly paywalled posts. So anyone who upgrades to a paid subscriber gets access to a ton, literally hundreds of articles of great content at their fingertips, whether they're whether they're monthly or or annual um, subscribers. Obviously, annual subscriptions are a better value, but um, that's a, it's a great way to, as I said, to show people what they get rather than just saying, you should upgrade, you should upgrade, you're going to get this, you're going to get this. You can show them exactly what they're going to get in a passive, gentle uh, sort of way, just by nudging them towards it, by showing them those links um, in your table of contents post. And you can drop those links as well into into other articles as, as well to show you actually. Really quick, if I click back to Saturday morning coffee post, so other people's links there. And if I go to the bottom, I've got this go deeper section. So I've, I've just linked three posts in a nice cascading style, which I like, um, which will send people through to other paywall posts as well. So it's another option that you can do. You can actually link individual posts um, within your articles at the, at the bottom as well. Again, just to keep people within your orbit and um, keep them spending time with your content, with what you've created. And the more time they spend with you, hopefully, uh, the more likely they'll be to upgrade to being paid subscribers or to buying your your products or to want to be coached by you in future, whatever whatever service it is you offer. So um, that is how you create a table of contents post on Substack. It's extremely easy. It's time consuming at the start, but after that point, it gets very, very easy and it's super effective. There are, there are high drivers of revenue. As I said, this post has, has generated um, thousands of dollars for me, uh, which is fantastic. In fact, why tell you when I can show you, as I've been talking about, um, this is the table of contents um, analytics uh, part of the dashboard. And as you can see, it has generated 242 new subscribers, um, 215 free, and crucially, 27 paid subscribers have come from this post, which has generated an estimated revenue um, increase of almost uh, $3,000. So it's pretty significant. Um, it's got a great open rate and... And great click through as well. So this is this is the main reason why you should create a table of contents post. They are high uh, revenue drivers for Substack. Probably the one of the highest revenue posts you can create, um, and you cycle people back to them again and again. So they're um, super effective. If you haven't done one yet, I definitely recommend giving it a go. Um, if you find this video useful, make sure you subscribe. If you're on YouTube or if you're on Substack as well, subscribe there too. If you haven't already. And um, if you can leave a comment, then do I try. To, I'll try to answer any questions I get and um, feel free to DM me um, a question if you have one or send me an email as well. Um, but I hope this was useful. Um, I know people have been asking about table of contents posts. So hopefully this will answer some of your questions and I'll see you in Substack again really soon. See ya.